Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are looking at electrochemical cells and we are discussing the electrolytic cell. In the past, we've looked at the applications of electrolytic cells and in the last um, episode, we looked at the extraction of aluminium. Today, we're going to look at the chloroalkali industry or the production of chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. And incidentally, the cell is called the membrane cell. And in the past, uh, and they, they use the mercury cell and uh, another cell which is also common is called the diaphragm cell. So if you look at this cell, this is called the diaphragm cell. Again, the, prote uh, the, the production of sodium hydroxide, uh, hydrogen and chlorine are here. The problem with the diaphragm cell is they use asbestos. And asbestos we see has, has um, a very it has a crippling effect on the miners that use them and it is, an, it is a hazard and in the past they even used the mercury cell here we see the amalgam basically the amalgam the mercury and the problem the disposable the disposal of mercury is a major environmental risk so the mercury cell here we see chlorine is also formed uh, the brine is given off the hydrogen is formed caustic soda is also formed caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide. So the mercury cell is uh, an environmental hazard. And we see that the diaphragm cell also has this diaphragm, which allows ions to go through. And because of the asbestos, it, uh, caution must be taken because asbestos also is an environmental problem. But we will look at this particular case where we have a membrane and this membrane is a permeable membrane that allows ions to go through so again here we see that electricity is supplied we have a negative terminal and a positive terminal and from here we can basically see how the from the one side concentrated salt solution is immersed uh, enters into this one chamber NaCl solution and the NaCl basically reacts with the water here and we basically we see that the reaction takes place where the electricity breaks up the NaCl into all these components. Now basically if you just look at it you got your NaCl and this NaCl is reacting with the water let's put a plus to show the reaction taking place and as a result of that, we see that chlorine is formed. Chlor Oops. Let's just get this chlorine. Chlorine is formed. Hydrogen is formed and sodium hydroxide are your products. So chlorine is formed, hydrogen is formed, and sodium hydroxide is formed in this particular reaction. All right, going further now, if you look at this particular case, the positive terminal, as we know, is our anode. And here at our anode, we see that chlorine gas is formed. Now, if you look at our anode reaction, if you have to just write it down, the anode, the anode, as we know, the anode is the reaction that undergoes oxidation and ox. So oxidation takes place at our anode. And here we see that there's chlorine ions, Cl minus ions, will undergo oxidation to form chlorine, which is a gas, by losing electrons and that will have to be the balancing number so that happens at the anode now if we look at our cathode the negative terminal is our cathode and here in the cathode we can see what happens is that the h2o that we have there this is our cathode. Our H2O basically will gain electrons. 
to form hydrogen gas hydrogen gas and to form to form the OH ions that we get from here OH minus ions this is a reduction so this is the two reactions that take place the, at, the, at the anode we see oxidation takes place where the chlorine ions in the solution become chlorine gas and give off two electrons and the water um, gains two electrons to form hydrogen and OH minus ions and this OH minus ions will react with the Na to form the NaOH so if we just write a net reaction here let's just have a look if we just look at our net reaction we see that <coughs> 2Cl minus ions, which came from the NaCl, will react with the water that was pumped into the this particular cell to form chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and OH minus ions. And here we see, comparing it to our first case, the Cl will be your Cl minus ions, the H2O will be with the H2, Cl2 with the Cl2, H2 with the H2, and OH with this, and the Na becomes our spectator ion, and this becomes our net ionic reaction for this particular cell. This particular cell is called a Nelson cell. For our purposes, just like the aluminium cell that we did in the lesson before, this particular process is called the Hall process. So, uh, coming back to our uh, Nelson cell, we see that this is the net reaction that takes place. The reason that sodium doesn't undergo reduction is because less energy will be required to uh, make water undergo reduction than sodium undergo reduction. That's why we see that the water undergoes the reduction rather than the Na. In this particular case now we see that in this in this example we see that what happens is we have three products that are formed if you look here in our diagram we see that chlorine is formed we see that hydrogen is formed and we see that sodium hydroxide or as we mentioned caustic soda is formed now those are three processes which can be used in industry if you look at the chlorine the chlorine has many uses. We have um, hydrogen and we have NaOH. And if you look at this particular case, we can see that chlorine can be used to manufacture plastics, for example. It has different uses. It's used in the manufacture of plastics, manufacturing of chic, which is used as... Um, um, in the bleaching agent or it can even be used in pesticides it can be used in the pre preparation of HCl etc etc I'm sure you'll have many notes in your textbooks regarding this if you look at hydrogen one of the processes is uh, in the manufacture of margarine and we see that it can be used uh, again into, to manufacture ammonia it can be used in the manufacture of HCl, whatever the case is. So there's many industrial uses. And if you look at sodium hydroxide, one of its most popular uh, uses is in the manufacture of soap. So and there are many, many other uses for this. So we see here that the Nelson cell, as we know it, can have many, many uses. And in this particular case, the membrane is here in between to allow ions to go through. In Another example, in the diaphragm cell, we have asbestos, but we know that asbestos has a health hazard. And in the past, they even had mercury cell, where they had mercury amalgam, where the mercury was a health hazard and caused lots of health uh, issues. And therefore, the most preferable cell will be the membrane cell. And that's all in this particular section. Thank you very much.